Hi, welcome to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Rick. I'm Sarah. Today we're going to be talking about home brewing. We're going to be talking about a beer that I'm going to be brewing today. It's uh, based on a beer, or at least inspired by a beer that we had while we were in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, the beer is not necessarily a clone. In fact, it's far from a clone, but it's inspired by a particular hop that neither one of us had been familiar with before and that we both found relatively intriguing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Huel Milan. It's a German hop that's actually a bread hop, and it's not one of the noble hops, that means. And it has these aromas of honeydew melons and strawberries that I mm -hmm. thought really applied themselves well to the pale ale that Earth Eagle Brewing in Portsmouth, New Hampshire was brewing. Um, and I decided I wanted to try something that explored the use of that particular uh, hop. Mm -hmm. So with Sarah's uh, suggestions as to, yes, please do that, <laughs> uh, we are gonna, I developed a recipe which you can read about on the website, uh, Vermont crafttours.com and what we'll do is once we've had it brewed up we'll give it another episode and we'll get to share the tastings and we'll let you know how it goes mm -hmm. yeah we um we discovered um earth eagle brewings on our anniversary trip to portsmouth new hampshire um and as rick usually does when preparing for these uh, little side adventures of a new place we've never been um, I'm usually in charge of logistics and Rick does kind of the fun part and finds all interesting things to go to. He's very good about fi always finding a yarn shop for me. Um, but of course, be breweries and beers, um, are always on top of the list too. And that was a funky place, wasn't it? It was, it was sort of reminded me of like a, I don't know, like a Northern hunting lodge mashed up with a weird tourist depot or something. It was very strange. <laughs> what was the, the, the bear skin on the, on the, the wall that kind of gave <laughs> you that inspiration? And, and like strange maps and a pair of snowshoes and yeah, but it was, it was great. And we really enjoyed their beers. I love their chocolate monk, the dark, um, the Belgian, Belgian stout. Um, yeah, that was excellent. And then we tried this one called the shepherd's crook appropriately. We got to meet the brewer. He was there having his brew after his shift. Mm -hmm. And the staff there is just so helpful that we got a lot of information about their beer. Mm -hmm. It's one of the nice things that's nice about brewing in general, but especially amongst home brewers, is the sharing of information. Right. None of this is, uh, you know, certainly people keep information proprietary, mm -hmm. but home brewers love to share share their recipes, and so do we. Yeah. So when I, and, and craft small craft breweries, too. Often yeah. you can, they'll tell you. Um, Sometimes right on the label, but if not, sometimes you can ask them to say, hey, what kind of hops are in here? And they'll go, oh, it's this and this and this. Some so. of my favorite breweries are the ones that pretty much tell you enough that you can brew it yourself. Yeah. Uh, our friends in Manchester, United Kingdom, at Cloudwater Brewing, pretty much put all of the malts, all of the hops right on the label. And a well, relatively trained brewer can just recreate that beer from that. Right. And they know that you're not going to, you know go in your kitchen and start making 10,000 gallon batches. So it's not really, you know, um, important for them to keep it a big secret. But yeah, Earth Eagle Brewing's funky. Definitely check it out if you go to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And um, so we brought home uh, a growler of that and, and continued to enjoy it. And then um, you came up with the idea to do... Um, this double brew day. So tell us more about that. Yeah, I only recently learned that the term is party guile is the word, and that's P A R T I G Y L E, not party guy, party guile. <laughs> and it's that's like a party. A, <laughs> but it's actually a historical method. Uh, and older brewers in many centuries ago would do multiple runnings of their grain bill in order to get the most calories out of it and the most uh, beer out of it. So you get your large barley wine styles, your very strong beers. Mm -hmm. and, and they'd then, be like for Christmas or special occasions. Exactly, right? exactly. And they would have, especially during the winter, because they'd mm -hmm. have a high caloric value. And then you would get your medium size from the second runnings, and that might be your week-to-week -week beer. And then you would get a small beer from the last runnings, and they'd get three or four runs. And small beers would have very little alcohol whatsoever in them, but they were safer to drink because they were boiling the water prior to that. Mm -hmm. They didn't necessarily know that was why, but it was a uh, an economic thing that also had a safety right. valve. They, they knew that beer was safer, that people weren't getting sick from it, so that would be what you'd drink um, probably instead of water. Exactly. Most, most days, yeah. Even children would be drinking this very small beer. Yeah. So I'm not trying to make a small beer per se, but I do want to be efficient in my brewing. 
like most of you, I'm a busy person, Sarah's a busy person, and when you are able to set aside a day to do a particular craft, sometimes you want to maximize what you get from that. And in this case, I wanted to make sure that I can get a couple of beers. But it also gives you an op opportunity to make more than one style. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'll be doing the same grain bill, but I'll be adding different hops or different amounts of hops to each beer. And then subsequently, I'm going to try different yeasts. Mm -hmm. So for the first beer, the pale ale, uh, even though it's not inspired by Shepherd's Croak from Earth Eagle Brewing, is still going to be a pale ale, and it's going to use a relatively clean um, uh, yeast that's called a US05. It doesn't add any particular flavors or uh, anything like that, mm -hmm. but it'll allow the hops to really shine through. And that's what we wanted to get from that particular beer. Now, the second runnings, I'm going to try to do a Belgian uh, or even a Saison. Mm. The, the yeast that we're using from that comes from a Belgian monastery. It's one of the Trappist uh, types of monasteries. And that'll lend a little bit of a plum and fruitiness on top of these other uh, the other. Uh, hops that will have fruit other flavors. flavors. Yeah, the other fruit flavors. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can look for the recipe. That's going to be on the website, VermontCraftTours.com. Mm -hmm. But I will, uh, I'll just tell you we'll be using some U.S. two-row malt. We're going to be using some honey malt. We're using some Pilsner malt and some Crystal 40L malt. For the hops, we're going to be using Magnum. That's mm -hmm. the bittering hop. But it doesn't have any aroma per se. So it's not going to, we're going to put it in about 45 minutes. It'll get a little bit of bite, and uh, but not much aroma. Then after that, we're using some citra. If you're familiar at all with New England style pale ales or IPAs, you're going to see a lot of citra. It's a relatively new hop, but it has been a, um, aggressively embraced by home brewers because of its as grapefruit and orange types of flavors, but it also has some high alphas, which gives it a little bit of a bite as well. Mm -hmm. We're only putting a little bit of that. And then lastly, lots of Huel Malon. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put that later in the boil uh, at only like 10 minutes and at the flame out. And this is designed just to give you that really nice aroma mm -hmm. that the melons and the strawberries present. And then on the secondary, when we move it from the primary fermentation to the secondary fermentation, and then we'll add some more Huel Malon just to make sure that it's really fruity on your right. nose. Right, right, nice and watermelony. Yeah, yeah. that's because that was the main characteristic. We we were mispronouncing the hop when we were reading off the board and going, "Oh, I'm going melon beer. Ooh, that sounds good." And it did. It tasted like honeydew melon when we had that beer there. So even though we're not trying to recreate that, we are trying to capture that signature flavor, I guess. So. Yeah, we're excited yeah. about it. It's again, it's a it's a challenging brew to do a party guile. Uh, it does require you have access to two burners. Sarah has a, a burner that she uses, that she and her mother use for their uh, fiber dyeing, and they're going to lend it to me so that I can have two kettles of water going in at a particular time. But don't get in, uh, you know, too discouraged about it. In my instructions, I kind of do it step by step in order, so it's a little bit of a dance, and you should be able to do it at home if you decide. Okay, great. Well, um, yeah, we'll see how that turns out. And uh, once the beer's ready, we'll have a tasting for you. So, yeah. so don't forget tuned. to subscribe so that you can uh, tune in later. Um, fortunately, there isn't a taste on this, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to describe it for you. Yeah, we'll be able to. Um, there's, yeah, there's no taste button. We can't pour it into the computer. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do a tasting and, uh, and let you know how everything turned out. Thanks again, and join us for the next episode. Thanks.